Excel community present with us today. Here at Excel Ally, we believe in experiential learning, that it is an important way of developing oneself. Towards this end, the leadership committee, through such events as today's, invites industry stalwarts and eminent achievers from all walks of life to interact with students and help us in gaining a better and more informed perspective of life and business. Ladies and gentlemen present, please join me in welcoming our distinguished guest of the moment, Mr. K. Raghavendra, VP and Head of Excel. Like the ball swings 
away and concern of the reverse way. But more importantly, the idea is to share and not talk or lecture. So I would love this session to be a lot more uh, interactive so that uh, we gain mutually in terms of understanding, more in terms of your wanting to know more and me trying to share my perspectives as I understand what the aspirations are. This, I think, is what I will be doing. Uh, what I will briefly touch upon is in terms of what this industry is all about, where it stands, how it has evolved over some time, and briefly talk about uh, my organization too, so that you get a context in terms of how this sunrise industry is being viewed. If you look at this industry, even today, forget uh, in tier 3, tier 4 towns, even some of the metros, people believe that this industry is still a call center. But the fact is that this is one of the fastest growing industry segment in the country. Uh, about six years back, we had more than 55% of the global business share this industry had. And today it's about 39 to 40 percent. While that is an area, I think which is as part of a natural growth, the fact is this industry is still growing because we still have 39 percent of the global share. And probably what is moving out in terms of uh, from India to other parts of the world is in the areas where uh, core competencies may not be there. Like say in terms of language competencies. Two is in terms of probably there are other destinations which could be cheaper than India. And three, it could also be uh, political and domestic considerations, which are allowing other geographies to develop. But the fact is, India still is a vibrant, growing uh, country with respect to this industry. And we have more than 66 countries being serviced from here. And you'll be surprised that more than 35 languages too are offered from India. So when I say language, it is just not in terms of customer service, but in terms of what also gets operated from this part of the world. The fact is, from just being a call center, from just being data entry operations or medical transcriptions, this industry, I think, has played a lot more than what common people understand of what this industry is all about. And when the industry came into India, our customers, people basically from the developed world said, this is the way to run the business. We just used to tell what and how we need to do our jobs. To a situation, eight, nine years down the line, where the focus was in terms of growth, focus started getting a lot more into domains, into different industries like verticals, where in areas like financial and accounting, uh, sourcing and procurement, and things like that, things gradually started to move other than just picking up the phone or making data entry on the system. A lot of focus was on domain and that gave uh, this industry a platform today where customers today are saying this is my operations you look at what is it that can be done ultimately the impact of the outcome is what matters to me so the way the industry evolved is from being told what to do today like in any consulting business plus something more. What the customer is saying is that this is my operations. Look at it, what needs to be done and how it needs to be done and give me a solution. So not only are you supposed to design a solution but also deliver it. It's not that I come in consult and move off. Because unlike the IT industry, this is not a project based industry. This is more in terms of an annuity business where we run in year on year on year on year. And therefore, with a continuous passage of time, it calls for crunching of timelines, more progress, 
bringing in economies of scale, use of technology, and looking at different ways of coming at the same solution with greater impact. That is how this industry has uh, uh, grown. Uh, when uh, about I joined this industry about five years ago, and uh, before joining this industry, I had uh, actually uh, spoken to Professor Ramnath. He is one of the leading professors in Iron Bangalore. And according to him, then, because I was working in the pharma sector and I was the head of the function there, it was as big as Infosys BPO in terms of size. And I was wondering, uh, should I get into a BPO industry where the common refrain was, trespasses beware, you will be hired. That's how this industry was known as. And the churn, the churn of this industry is crazy. Irrespective of what NASCOM says, uh, the churn is close to about 50 to 55 percent. That's how this industry is. And what he had told, and I was wondering whether I should leave the so-called knowledge industry of pharma, uh, which was again in a different segment, to get into BPO. And uh, I, was, I was doing my AMP prior to joining uh, at the Manhattan Center program there. And he said, if I 2020, maybe the numbers would have moved conservatively lower. But he said by 2020, there will be more than 20 million graduates working in this industry. So after the Indian railway, this was supposed to be the next big bet in terms of the way the industry was moving. This is one industry where uh, you have people who are working, working with Fortune 100 companies. When I passed out 28 years ago, if I had to work, say, with a Microsoft or an IBM, Probably I should have passed out from IBM, I'm sorry, IBM, or from IIT, and then uh, maybe in a class of 40, three or four people have got selected. But today this industry allows, whether it's someone from Japan or a place from Tutikorn in Tamil Nadu or from Tinsuki and Assam, he or she with just plain vanilla graduation is able to work in the best of class, latest systems and processes, whether it's in terms of business domain, in terms of technology, or in terms of any of the industry working. Sitting in his hometown. And that is how this industry is changing the landscape of the country. Imagine if, in, I'm sure, in some of the interiors, a computer is something which a student will have no exposure to in a tier 4 college or a tier 4 town. It could be in a computer lab, probably you need to take out your chapels and get into the classroom and be allowed in a period to work on the computer. And that's reality is. And what this industry is doing is allowing such people to actually get into an industry like this and work in organizations like ours this is world class. I believe a few of you are from Infosys. And my only uh, take on this is, India is a land of great intellect. I don't have to talk about Jugaad. But the fact is that given the environment, we can rule the world. And if 20 million people are going to operate in this segment, in this sector, imagine the landscapes both in terms of hygiene, in terms of education, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of expectations, in terms of thinking beyond. And that's what this industry is doing in terms of changing the landscape of the way things move. From where we started off by taking calls or doing data entry operations, operations the fact is today the industry into diverse segments including in areas of aerospace or in terms of uh, knowledge processing, big data. I think everywhere uh, this industry is now making its presence felt. Why is it or how is it that transition or transformation happened? As I told you, one is in terms of domestic compulsions and political considerations. And two is it seeing the success story in India a lot of other geographies, emerging economies, developing countries uh, decided uh, to start such operations where there are core competencies. And the businesses which started moving to those locations where 
the traditional low value adding and where language dependency was high started going there. And then as an industry, NASCOM and leading organizations like us started looking at moving up the value chain. And that's how they say necessity is a mother of all invention. And that's why uh, this industry has moved up the value chain. And today, if you look at how this industry is different, I believe about 55 to 60 percent people from here are from the IT industry. But the fact is, the ITES or the DPM industry is different is that the people working on this industry is online on customer systems, processes, activities and operations. Whether it's in terms of uh, ordering a, a spare part or paying a customer in the bank or in terms of processing someone's payroll, this industry ensures that it has a great impact in the way a customer runs his business. Because imagine if I have to say this is the most safest airline and the pilot at a safe record is 99%. Would you want to get into that aircraft that says 99%? Similarly in this industry, if the person in the BFSI segment has to make entries for transferring of funds and he does one mistake, what happens? You will be liable to huge amounts of legal cases right through the history when they go bankrupt to the country. And therefore, the way technology also is playing a role is changing the face of this industry. Again, I can only talk from the experience of my organization. We believed that US is not the beginning and end of all business. While in the English speaking world, probably India has a great edge, but there are businesses beyond America, the America, the USA. And that's where we said that we need to increase our footprint, even in Europe and the rest of the world. And that's the time as an organization to look at a strategy to look at opening centers across the globe and getting into mergers and acquisitions. And the focus was just not in terms of language, but also in terms of domain. And that's what I think is making a huge difference. Organizations, progressive organizations realized while there's a lot of money to be made in the call center, believe me, the fact is it is not a sustainable business. And that's why countries like Philippines today has overtaken India to become the call center capital of the world. And if India has to compete, it has to focus on domain.